The Harare Eagles were on a no-holds-barred mission as they sent three contestants, Stedman, Eleanor and Finals crashing in the bushes. Only one contestant managed to break through to the next round. Today we are in the city of Kings where Gerald, Tubelise and Tamsanga are looking for more eagles to nest. Good day judges, my name is Ryan Katai and I hail from here at Bulawayo. When I was seven years old, I was already engaged in agriculture. My family owned a 10 hectare farm. That's the only thing that we had. I went to a mission school, one of the best in the country, Nyanga High School. Throughout all that, what took me through was the farm that we had. The major challenges that we faced was on selling the produce. How could we find a market for our produce? We ended up producing grain, storing it for three months, four months, up until someone takes a sack and a sack up to another sack. We came up with this in 2017. This was revolutionary at the time, but now it is the dream. Farmer.Africa is the website that links that smallholder farmer in Yazura to that buyer in the Victoria Falls. How? We managed to put up together with my co-founder a plan and a business model. What exactly were the problems that I faced with my family when we were doing this production crop? Now the problem was that we didn't have access to markets. Yes, we could post on WhatsApp. Yes, we could post on text. Yes, we could tell relatives. But then how were they to reconcile that information for them to be able to provide that to us? This is our current valuation at the moment at 550,000 US dollars after our current first, first round raise this year. We are actually on a seed round and we believe this revolutionary is our show. This is our current projection. Right now we stand at over 8,000 farmers registered on our platform. And this has, been, this has just been done in one year. And I'll be frank, in four months. We project to get to over 45,000 farmers by 2024. But then, of that figure, we project that almost 60% of that figure will satisfy the domestic market. We need food. But then, we, have, we are already identifying farmers that are capable, interested, and have the capability to be able to push for exports. Those are the ones that we are here for today. We also have no answer to the frequently asked question, how do I sell my produce to the UK? How do I sell to Turkey? How do I sell to Germany? Clearly one of the most fearless, confident presenters so far in the nest. But when Tamsang has got a lot of questions, the wind can blow in any direction. Ryan, yes. thank you very much. What, what are you doing in this? Where is your income? Okay. We have a platform that is linking buyers directly to smallholder farmers, right? So the problem that we actually have right now is that we have more buyers who are chasing produce. Then we have produce that doesn't have the appeal on the local market because it is flooded. Uh, Ryan, you didn't tell me where you make money. Sorry. So we make money two times. Farmers subscribe to be on our platform. Uh -huh. Currently it's 10 <coughs> US dollars per year. How much? 10 US dollars per year. How many do you have now? Over 8,000. You don't have an exact figure? Um, it's actually 8,253 as of yesterday. Okay, and all, of all yesterday. these 8,253 paid $10. $10. Okay, so we have a free trial period where the farm actually on, on, is onboarded on the platform. Right, how many are paid? How many paid, are paid, paid out? farmers right now as of yesterday? I, I got out of the office yesterday, 2,435. So you, you, you got 20,000 from them for this year? 24,435. Okay. That's the first tire. The second tire? Commissions. On, so on, on the buyer side. On the broker. So, so there are times when buyers would want to secure a transaction, mm -hmm. which usually involves a lot of money. But then with this model, we've, we're still, we're still ex trying to how, look How at much have you made on that? On, on the commissions, we've made 5,000. Who has done a similar website here locally? I know at ZITF the students from NAST had one which was exactly for small order yeah. farmers. Mm. And then the kind, and that valuation, just to come to think of it, where, how did you come up with that valuation of 550,000? Um, so we had the help of Miller Center. Um, mm -hmm. it's a, it's, it, we're part of the accelerator. 
the food systems accelerator. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones who helped us in coming up with the valuation. And one thing that was valued more was the platform. So ju just to come back to your presentation, yes. what are you seeking in this competition? So right now, what we're seeking, mm. most of our farmers mm. frequently ask us, how they can engage in the export market, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then what we don't have the capacity right now to do, given the size of our team and also our knowledge, is to help them on how they can standardize their products. Okay. So you are not seeking to export. What you are seeking is to have a relationship with ZimTrade. In yes. case we've got farmers who want to be exporting, you work together with ZimTrade mm -hmm. in making sure that your platform is active, but you are not exporting anything. So Ryan, if I'm getting you correctly, um, you have this network of farmers, right? Yes. That have ready-made produce, right? No, yes. they don't. So far an impressive presentation. We find out Ryan is not here to export. If you are trained, you are then able to train the other farmers exactly. on what they yes. need to do. Then we bridge them on these two um, Excellent, because what is happening is you are leveraging on big data right yes and now you are not in this competition to export yes, but you, you want a to... partnership and a collaboration with zim trade yeah. so that so that ultimately these other farmers can benefit from zim trade that's correct i think he's a broker he, he wants to export mm. in my view no he wants we're, to... we're not exporting no he doesn't want They're to export he wants to even in our motto we don't probably. buy mm. we just provide a bridge yes you're not exporting no. they're not exporting no we're not exporting. If this uh, uh, Ryan wants to be trained by Zim Trade and become a broker yes. for Zim Trade, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll give you the impact. That's what I, yeah, of, he wants to be a broker. I'll yeah. give you the impact of this. Right now, today, if but let's, I, let's agree with you. You don't want to export. I, I don't want to export. All right. Mm. But then I'll put this to you. But you want to facilitate exportation. Mm. Yes. So you want to export in a way. Okay. You're, without exportation, exportation, you're, you're going to. You're, the ultimate goal is exportation should have ha happen for your business to function, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. He, he wants to he, facilitate, he wants to facilitate export. exports. Yeah, so working me, with the Zim Trade. So mm. for me, he's exporting. Really, Tamsanga? He's not exporting. The man has just said he doesn't want I, to I export. Think in, in he your wants view, to be an export ready. I think in, in his yeah. view, yeah. I, I get your view. Yes. I get his view. All right. After after this happens, do mm. our exports in Zimbabwe increase? Yes, they, they, they do. increase. Ah, so he's an exporter. Ah, no, ah. <laughs> he's an export readiness consultant. It doesn't Let's... matter, but it facilitates exportation, isn't it? It does. Yeah. So for me, the, the, anyone who increases exports is an exporter. I, I like the innovation mm. in terms of the product. I like the market linkage which is coming with it. I like the relationship which can be formed between you and ZimTrade in mm. ensuring that we have got more farmers who are exporting. More so if we are going to have young farmers exporting through your platform. So for me, I would say you are a good partner to work with ZimTrade in ensuring mm. that we have got more exports. So in terms of the competition, I would say for now, it will be a no for me, but I would like to see you getting involved with the Zim Trade mm -hmm. so that we mm -hmm. facilitate more of our young entrepreneurs export, young farmers export as well. That's Thank for you me. so much. For a moment there, I thought Gerald was going to say yes. In terms of the competition, it's, it's definitely a no for me. But um, what I'm seeing is that um, I like the fact that you are leveraging big data. Yeah, you messed up by saying you're not an export. <laughs> <laughs> it's an export competition. I, I, I tried to direct you to say you're an exporter. I feel like you're an exporter because you will create that export. But you convinced my colleagues that you're not an exporter. And, and ultimately, what I say will, 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 will not add any value to you. But I think, I think go ahead and... Uh, and exploit this idea, I think it's a great idea. Well, better luck next time, Ryan. With three no's, Ryan becomes today's first victim. Good afternoon, Eagles. Afternoon. I'm all right, thank you. Uh, my name is Daoud Yassin. 
I'm from uh, Lichinga Private Limited. We are based in Bulawayo. Uh, we are currently exporting uh, bovine hides, or must I say, sun dried hides. Currently, our market is Nigeria at the moment. And we've exported uh, three containers so far since we began uh, some time this year, it was in March. And then just because of COVID, we just had some glitches, maybe we could have done more. So I have a partner who is in Nigeria, who, is, um, who I'm working with now. So what happened is uh, I'm from the Muslim community. So in the Muslim community, we just get uh, some time to sit with different people. So this is when I met this brother. So we're just discussing business and opportunities. So when we're discussing this issue, that's when he told me to say in Nigeria, they do use these skins. So I was just wondering at first, what for? And then I later got to find out they actually eat these skins. Wait a minute, did you just say they eat this in Nigeria? Something they call boom in the Nigerian language. I don't know what they, how they process it, but when they sell it, they actually wait in cages in butchers. And it's quite expensive meat to them. So this is when we started the thing. So what he does, he pays me in advance. So when he pays me in advance, that's when I order this and then I sell to him. So we collect these skins around Bulawayo and outside Bulawayo. So at the current price, I've been buying at about 80 cents to one US dollar per skin at the current moment. And then I sell it to him at $2. So when I say we've exported three containers, which means it's about 6,000 skins so far. Because in a <coughs> container, we may load about 2,000 in a container so far. So he pays in advance, and then I just do the ordering, and then he also pays for any other shipping charges. All I do, I go and buy, and then I sell to him. And then I only uh, organize transport to collect the skins from the abattoirs into the warehouse. And then anything else from outside the warehouse to the container depot, like we load here in Manika depot in Blawayo. That's where we do the loading. Anything out of the warehouse to there until it gets to him, it's all up to him. How much do you make per, per container? Per Take con us through that. Per container. Mm -hmm. Per container it's about 4,000 US dollars. Yeah, that's 4,000. Yes. Your cost is about to buy them? To buy them about 1,600. Okay, 1,600. 1,600. To, to, to about 2,000, isn't it? Yes, to about 2,000. Okay. And then what other costs do you have? Uh, just uh, tracking and transportation from where, from the arbitrage or wherever we're getting them, just into the warehouse. How much do you think you've made in profit? In profit? In profit, we've made about 7,000 US dollars. So the 7,000, you have it in your pocket, ready to buy? It is ready to buy because uh, we are. So you don't need him to give you in, in advance now anymore. No, he still has to, because we really need to up our market. Daud, how big is your team? Sorry. How big is your We're team? We're a team of six. Okay, and um, from your pitch, uh, you've only got one customer. At the moment, yes. At the moment, in Nigeria, yes. Okay, all right. Yes. If Sorry. you had other sources of funding yes. apart from apart this, from him yes yeah what would be your capacity like it will be quite a lot i can say because uh yeah we're just limited just because he's the one who basically uh prepays and then after the prepayment that's when we go about to do all the other things who takes up the skins except you because the bottleneck is going to be the skins who takes up the skins except you so I didn't get in the that. Abattoirs. In the abattoirs, yes. Yes, who's competing for the skins? Okay, there's some Chinese, they're also doing the same thing. And they buy it what? Mostly is Chinese, yes. And they buy it how much? At 80 cents to a dollar. It's around about the same price. Okay. It's around about the same price. It's only a matter <coughs> of who goes first. Which, which markets are you talking of apart from that partnership in Nigeria? Uh, okay, what is happening now? This guy in Nigeria is also, I mean, he wants to also take to Tanzania. So that is where the link comes in now. So it's evolving around yes, one person. Just around him. If you walk up today and says, I'm no longer interested in buying from you, your business ends. I'm sure, ah, no, it doesn't end. How will the links survive? have quite been uh, created. How will you maneuver from there? Even now, I'm speaking to the one guy. He's, he's actually his, old, his, his other partner, but he's in Tanzania. He's the one we are still liaising with also now. 
beautiful project with a whole new market. But with just one customer on board, will Zimtrade invest their time and money onto it? This is, uh, this is a hard one for me. I like the fact that you're already exporting. And I'll be very honest with you, I, um, I'm not very uh, conversant with this uh, type you of can business. Taste it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Your pitch actually sparked a lot of interest in me. I liked your visuals, the fact that you're opportunity oriented, uh, notwithstanding the fact that you've only got one customer, which is an. Oh, I'm a bit scared. But all the same, I can't run away from the fact that you're already, you've already tasted exporting. And with a little help from Zimtrade, they should be able to open up for you a myriad of opportunities. <coughs> ah, let me just give you a yes. Oh, yes. It's a yes for Dowd to go through, but a no for tasting from Tubelise. Will Gerald say yes, especially with just one customer on board? Uh, when looking at your business model, from the first presentation, the presentation which we're doing. For me, I said, wow, you are already exporting. That's what we are looking for. The only thing which is sort of taking me backwards is that you are relying on one partner. There is high partnership risk from my own assessment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if the person turns around and says, I'm no longer dealing with you, your business will start to stumble. I am not seeing much of an effort from your side to look for other markets to help you not to rely on one, on one. client. I understand. More so, you are also not clear what they are using these things for. You said maybe they eat. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm very much aware. You are very much I'm aware. Very much aware of what <coughs> you should dig deeper so that at least you are able to then identify other markets so yes. that you are not relying on one <laughs> partner. Okay. The concept is good. You also need to look at the wet, wet blue side yes, yes. so that at least you can be able mm. to grow your business around it. Mm. Yes. For me, it's a yes. What a surprise with two yeses and what a gamble too. Expect anything with the eagle's nest. Mm. You, you are, you, you've seen an opportunity mm. and I like the way that you've now got your own warehouse. You're already trying to, to, to stock up. Um, <clears throat> I think the wet blue uh, needs a lot of equipment. Um, it's, it's a, there's a lot of complication. There, there are markets there that you have to compete with on pricing, and then there are the Chinese and all that. Yeah. I, I just think you need to just capacitate this business and 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 get as much as you can from it. <clears throat> and I can see the biggest barrier we have is that you don't have financing you have everything around you you just need to structure your business you don't you don't know how much money you make you're not sure i think sometimes the money is in your pocket you don't account for it clearly you said you made seven thousand but clearly i, I am definitely sure you didn't make seven thousand uh you've got six partners we're not sure what the relationship is what is the structure <clears throat> but I, I like that you're exporting and you, you you're a person that that just has to be capacitated and, and you found a market that we didn't even know about. Mm. So you can even expand your, your sourcing uh, to other countries. If you are able to, to compete with the Chinese, it means you can compete with the Chinese in South Africa, in buying in South Africa. You can compete with them in, in Mozambique, everywhere, because the Chinese are the ones that are, are taking most of the, of the hides and taking yes. them there. Yes. So if you are competing them with here, you can compete with them anywhere and supply that market. Well done, Dodi. Thank, Thank you very much. Well, well done. Congratulations. Thank you. With three yeses, Dowd goes through to the next round. Meet McLaurin Gala. He too, like every other contestant, wants Zimtrade's help in breaking into the international market. But is he ready for that? Okay, uh, there are many bad reasons why people to start their businesses. But however, there is one legitimate reason why people to start the business. We all know what that is. It is to change the world. It's a pleasant morning to you all. My name is Michael Nkala and I'm from Milon Q, Events Management and Cleaning Service. With me here, there are some pictures of the Events Management Department and there's a reference from one of the clients. She says, thank you for the wonderful service that you gave us. It was more than what you paid for. And def definitely, we recommend you to other clients. Okay, how are we different from others in the event sector? We offer everything in one roof. 
you offer the decoration, the catering pay, system equipment area. Then we have the love based corner, where you offer picnics, engagements, surprise party, dinner, set, dinner setups. Then we have the kids corner. We offer kids deco, jumping castle, trampoline, clown, kids picnic. And then future plans uh, for the company to manufacture cleaning detergents, export and create an international brand name. Follow our detergents international and offer cleaning services. I'm looking at your business model. So we have got cleaning, uh -huh. right? Yeah. We have got detergents making, uh -huh. then we have events management. management. Which one is your cash cow? Uh, the cash cow currently is the events management because that's where I am getting events and tenders. As for cleaning company, there are no tenders yet at the moment. And as for the detergents, I'm not yet allowed to sell them as I'm still making some paperwork so that I may sell them according to law. On, 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 your, on your detergents, have you done costings for them? How do on, you know they're going to be competitive and how do you know that their quality is going to be exportable? The quality is... For the person who taught me how to make these detergents was coming from the UK, UK. So I asked for her to teach me. Then he said that side they do that detergents this way. So I copied from there. So how do you know you are doing them cost effectively? Cost how effective. do you know that when you when you sell them you'll make a profit? For example, if you are buying some of those ingredients. For instance, just tell us about this. How much do you think it costs to make it's, this? Uh, sun, sun, sunlight liquid. Yeah. Okay, if you are buying this detail, the ingredients, actually, maybe if you buy them for $10, eh, you can make 20 liters. All right. Eh, all the ingredients. Of which, if you are selling this. Tell us the ingredients. What are the ingredients? There? Uh, there's acid, then there's coloring, there's flavoring lemon, there's perfume for this sunlight liquid. What type of acid? Sulfuric acid. Okay. And then that acid is used to clean the gems, for example, if you are watching the place. And then the, they can be harmful also to children. So those things, that when selling that thing cost a dollar, that small pot. Uh -huh. uh, I think and it's 500 meals. Meals. Yeah. 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 So if you put $10 to make 20 liters, mm -hmm. then I, get, I guess there's going to be much profit. I was expecting the Eagles to have dropped McLaurin by now for just packaging his product in an unlabeled soft drink bottle. Um, in a good year, how many events do you do in a very good year? For example, events that are seasonal. Okay. like April, August and December. Mm -hmm. uh, often on April, all, all weekends, like Saturdays, we'll be having events. Then in December, maybe from, like from 20 December to something like 31 December, mm -hmm. there'll be events every day. I like the fact that you're knowledgeable. You've been asked what ingredients. I thought you were actually going to stumble, but you didn't. You are um, the backward integration using these detergents to into your in your cleaning business for me it's a it's a yes Tuli must be feeling very generous today so, i'm looking at your business model there is a lot of activity happening around your business model mm -hmm. you are trying to export the service at the same time you want to get into manufacturing at the same time you've got your cleaning services which you also want to do and for me i feel the cleaning side has not taken root. The detergent side has also not taken root. There is not much which I'm seeing in terms of effort on the export of your services. You talked about exporting the kids' party in SA. It's related to your relatives. I'm not seeing the business model emphasizing on export. Unfortunately for me, it's a no. Export of services is a new thing to, 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 to the Zimbabwean community. We are not used to it. So people just want to export goods, 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 goods. And, and I, I feel like there's a lot of services we, we, we can get, get mileage from because we've got people that are actually good at what they do and can go and compete outside the country. I think there's a lot of refinement that needs to be done on your business. Uh, I, the fact that you do everything alone, uh, you don't have a team, you don't have a structure, but I think a structure can be found. Um, I still want to get more into how, how many, how, how you could have done, how, how you're going to do in South Africa. And I, but I still feel like you've got a lot of drive, uh, you're eloquent talker, and you seem like you can follow up on what you've done. So for me, it's going to be a yes. And it's a surprise, yes, from Tamsanga. Yeah, thank you, sir. McLaurin mm. goes through to the next round, but will he win the competition? Keep watching Eagle's Nest to find out what happens next.